right, you can kind of sketch this out if you want. I don't because I'm so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But if you want to get an idea, um, try not to get the video can't see it. The horizon in the middle. A basic rule for composition is dividing your paper into thirds. And it doesn't matter if the paper's long horizontally or vertically, or if you have a super long piece of paper like this. If you divide it into thirds and you have your point of interest at the intersection of one of those intersections, that's going to give you good, uh, start you off in a pretty good composition, say up here. Where if you have it and it's right in half, it's just kind of boring. It doesn't work as well. So I want to keep this up a little higher, even than what I'm seeing here, because I want to work on the grass. So that's, see how lightly I do it? And you don't have to do it. This I just did in my head. Um, there's this little shoreline here behind. You can barely see it, I know. Here, this comes forward. See how that horizon, that's kind of the horizon line, and these guys are going to come a little bit forward because it's a point that's closer to me. So I want to kind of put that in there. There's going to be some trees here, bigger trees. Here, if you want to draw it out, you can do that. It's very light, I realize. And then have an idea of where your water is going to come down. I want a nice kind of S flow, maybe, and I'm just kind of thinking that. So it's not just a, a like this, you know, you want, you want it to be organic and... And it doesn't have to follow. So if you look at that, here the water oh. went like this and then... Yeah, you know, when I did you want. yesterday, I was kind of winging it. So I, I ended up leaving more white down here, which I think is better than the photograph. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, because we're artists, mm -hmm. try not to copy a photo. Mm -hmm. Try to use it as a taking off place and an idea. Mm -hmm. um, last week we did kind of copy this one, but this especially, I mean, if you're doing someone's face, that's different. <laughs> you kind of have to be accurate on that. Unless you're Picasso. Normally I start at the top and work down, especially if you're sitting. If you're sitting and I stand, because I've just learned to do that, um, you're apt to set your hand down because we're so used to writing. Mm -hmm. And you don't really want to hold your brush like you're writing. You want to hold it either loosely, somewhere further back, so you have this nice loose flow. What color do we, I made a yellow sky here. What should we do? Give me color. Pink. <laughs> we're gonna do a pinkish sky? Okay. Coral. Oh, now she's coral. She's switching okay. it already. <laughs> So as I bring some paint out into my mixing area, I, I kind of mix separate piles. If I wanted to pick up yellow, I don't want to go in that with the red. It's going to contaminate that because that's a lighter color. Clean your brush thoroughly. See, there's still, do you see how there's still pink in that? Mm -hmm. So I know I didn't do a really good job. Thanks, that pink is just poison. <laughs> it's not coming out. No, it's not your fault. Pick another brush. <laughs> I could. I could pick up another brush. So I'll bring out some of this. This is kind of a lemony yellow, even though there's a number of different names like Gamboge. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a light yellow. There's there's a whole... Beth is a pigment expert over here. She just... This is more Gamboge. That's more Gamboge. But the, in different brands, they come out with... Um, it's different pigments, but slightly different names as well. I am just going to soften that sky. So as I'm spraying it, I'm trying to keep it above that shoreline in the distance, but wet the sky a little bit. And if I want, I could check that out in the light. I, I That's the nice thing about having something like this. You can pick it up and look at it quickly. So let's, um, I think I'm going to put the light over here this time. So by using this, I don't, I want to keep it white and to keep white in your painting, you have to leave the paper shining through. Mm -hmm. That's valuable in watercolor. In other medium, you can add um, paint on top. You go medium and dark to light. 
but in watercolor you have to start light and then work up to your darker areas and you want to keep to have a sparkle you want to keep some white showing through in the paper so there's some of this I'm not really th I'm just grabbing kind of a variety of color here going along I want to keep the horizon edge pretty sharp there let's hope it works you never quite know right this is trees I'm seeing it's dry there see the difference between how this is blending and here it's dry mm -hmm. so I, I check my my soft sprayer I want to kind of soften that area the trees are going to be darker and come over that mm -hmm. so I don't have to make it too exact I kind of, I'm kind of watching now see the paint there's a little because it's wet it's puddling there a little bit do I want that so you have to think about it it looks like a, like a little sun dog happening you guys know sun dogs yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's when the sun it's like that moisture in the air creates the streak like the refraction of the light coming down I'm going to wrinkle a dry piece of paper towel I want to twist it slightly because I don't want straight lines I want it a little off and I'm just going to blot it once and then lift see how that kind of softened that but as that dries it's going to I'll do it over here this is wet now so now I have to find another dry spot see that mm, kind of nice. creates little clouds nice. very subtle mm -hmm. okay what I'm doing here is I'm checking that distance it is still quite wet right there and that's going to be that um, shoreline in the distance since I have to wait for that to dry, I'm going to lay in some of the water. I want it to be quite light. Here I left almost white, white. So I want very little pigment in my brush. Here's a puddle of water. I pull in a little bit. See how I pull in a little bit at a time because I have a mixing area. I can come over here and pull in a little bit more. And then I can just in, remember I had that like nice S curve kind of thing coming across. This will dry one third lighter. You'll hardly see it. I think this is going to be where the grass is. So I'm not worried <laughs> about that. If this were in the sky, I might try to do something. But I know there's going to be grass down there. So who cares? Okay. See, this is reflecting. This is redder over in this area. So in the water, I'll just throw in a little more. Soften some of those edges with the water. I'm so tempted to go into that distant shoreline, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's not gonna work well. All right. It looks like here you went in before it was quite I don't dry. want it, yeah, I don't want it totally dry mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I do want some of that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's now getting to that point. It's so dry in here. I want a little different from that, so I'm trying not to, I'm going to add, look, oh, look, I have a little bit of green already on my palette, right? So I can just kind of pull some of that in. I want to purple it down. Why do I want to purple it down? I don't know. A little blue, but instead of putting the blue right into here, I touch it over here to see how much is on my brush, mm -hmm. and then I can bring in it there. I am going to see how my brush is separating now. Mm -hmm. That means it's a little dry. So I'm going to just touch the corner into the water like that and it'll just add some water back in i check check it there it's kind of an ucky color all right so i'm going to add a so whoop. so that's kind of it's kind of a horizon line back there mm -hmm. i'm going to add some trees up into there and i'm just staying up on the tip that corner tip of my brush so even with a fat, big brush like this, I can still get quite a bit of detail, as you found in, who did it? You did it, yes. <laughs> Somebody over in this area, I remember seeing it. So, but see how that looks like a mistake that came down? Well, why is it a mistake? Maybe that shoreline does that over there. I do want, water always finds its own level. So if you're going to have the surface of water in the distance, it needs to be flat it doesn't have to be flat all the way across but like right here if that's a shoreline it's got to be horizontal 
and now it's bleeding up so it looks like some branches of trees going up in there. I prepare some grassy color. Here's, um, I do have some sap green here, basically because it's quick. It is very easy to mix this color with one of one of your blues and a yellow, but for demonstration's sake, it's it's quick and easy. I want to be sure I have a good amount of space to cover here, so I want to be sure I have enough paint to do that, mm -hmm. and I don't want it just a green because that would be boring. I'm going to add some burnt sienna, which is the brickish color. In I do see. No, notice how I do. I check this because the other day I talked about the granulization as it dries. Often you can get granulate. The best thing to paint with is fresh paint, but it's hard to every time put out fresh paint. It gets expensive too. Those are very strong colors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Almost too strong. I know that's my, where my water is, so now I am just going to lightly spray. This is going to give me a little bit more of an irregular, irregular surface to go into. And the um, paint will start kind of taking on its own. Feeling it, I don't, I don't have total control over it which I find exciting. I think it's kind of neat to let the paint take on some of its own personality. Notice how I'm skipping here and there to leave some sparkle shining through. If you know salt marshes, they always have these little places where light will come through. This is that distant shoreline over there. I want that to be a little more. Now I had paint on my brush, but I could go into the ultramarine blue because it's darker than this. And I don't think, I'm just touching it, so it's not going to contaminate that a lot. Um, there's going to be shadow in here, in those trees. And I'm not necessarily thinking trees, I'm thinking shapes and of area and color. So I want, I'm, I'm going to try to touch the brush, not the whole side of the brush this way, but kind of just part of it. I know it's not going to work. I was going to put in some tree trunks, but what I'm going to do instead is throw in just some shapes and, and thinking kind of trees. A little green, a little blue. This way, because of the blue in it, it's going to differentiate the trees from kind of the grass in the foreground darker as you get down underneath. I'm going to leave a little white shining through there. Kind of two things. It keeps a sparkle in the painting, but it also will have, I can have light shining through when I go at the very end when it's dry, dry, and add some tree trunks like I did here. See that's, mm -hmm. see how crisp those lines are is because it was dry there. Mm -hmm. And it will look like you can see through those tree trunks to the distance. Okay, so I got that in. I still want a little. That, that just feels a little awkward. That that contrast there, the light and dark, would pull the eye back that way. So now I'm going to kind of, I'm laying the brush almost flat mm -hmm. to come across okay. with some dry brush. Oh, wow. I want to think about the water. I kind of loaded this side and I was going to go with this side. I don't know if you noticed that, but I had put this down and then I started to go uh, use that other side. So no, this is the side that has the paint on it. I want to use. <laughs> um, I'm so I'm thinking the water, you know, it's fatter in some places and then it um, gets thinner in others. And I'm not, I don't want those bushes in the front. I'm going to do this as if it's this kind of grass all the way down. And as it's coming closer, I want it to be deeper. Purple? Well, I don't know. Purple's kind of, it's just going to be an interesting color. Instead of the same, same all the way down. Let's 
see the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this morning I needed more coffee to get going and it's going to be a balance between keeping going and not shaking. It's an it's interesting amazing. little thing. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. Because it's, it's still slightly damp. Mm -hmm. So it's blending. So by dropping this, look at the texture that's happening there. I just sprayed it. Now, um, this, I, you did, I just brought this in today. This is usually my pastel box. But I wanted, that's with water. Mm -hmm. This is isopropyl alcohol. So let's mm. see what this does. No. Oh. It's a little more intense. Now, who knows if it's going to dry like yeah. that? What is it that you use? Alcohol. 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 It's pure so, yeah. this is my water bottle. This is my alcohol. So, I put tape or I, I label that it's alcohol. So, you know, you think you're going to spray water and it turns out to be. But see, it's already blending in. Mm -hmm. In. Now, I pick up my round brush. Um, there's shadows. The light's coming from behind. So, these grasses are going to have shadows on this side near the edge of the water almost always when i start with shadows i'll use ultramarine blue and burnt umber that's going to be too dark for this but it's a good place to start then i can pick up maybe a little more um burnt sienna and green so I'm, I'm like, eh, that's not quite the color I wanted. A little darker, so I can just touch a little bit of that, pick up a little bit more, just to make it slightly darker. Excuse me, Andy. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep okay. jumping in you. So hopefully mm -hmm. while it's still kind of wettish, <coughs> it should create a shadow on the downside of some of these grassy areas. So I'm kind of throwing that in. The other trick with this one is this paper is not as good as that paper. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as what? It's not as good. It's not oh. the same. Oh. While this is wet here, if I can kind of see how I'm dragging mm. that. Mm. Now, the, overall, the paper is still quite wet. See how that's making nice, like, little grassy areas? As it dries, I can come back in. Now those, that's a shorter one. Here's longer. As I come toward the front, okay, grab some green. I'm going to make the grasses longer, but don't overdo it. You have to do a little bit and then leave it alone. Back here, just little touches because it's shorter grass because it's further away. It's not shorter. It's just because it's in the distance. So this is... Well, see, right off, I don't like, this is just, nope, it's a dry brush. I'm going to make it damp. And the nice thing about one of these is you kind of, you can splay it. Mm -hmm. This is just too, there's too much of a line right there. So I want to break up that line. It's not doing what I want it to do, but... Because I don't want clumpy clumps, and there's kind of a clump right there. So before it, it gets too dry, I'll just add more to, and I step back and I kind of squint at it and say, okay, what does it need? Sometimes if I take a picture of it on my phone, I can see something. That gives you exactly, a, it gives you a good, more like objective view of what you're doing. Put it on your phone, hold it away from you. Dude, was it this class the other day where you can take, um, take all the, color saturation out and turn it to mm -hmm. black and white to see if it's um, your darks. Your value tones are good. Yeah. I don't like this. Look at this sharp mm -hmm. sharpness right there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as you as you're painting along, I want that light to go in behind that a little bit. You, you kind of watch it as going, like if I set this aside to dry as I'm painting the other one, every now and then I would glance over to this one to see, is it kind of going where I want it to or do I need to catch something? Am I getting a giant blossom up here that I don't want? And then you can adjust. I have nothing in the distance here. That looks just disjointed. Do you ever use a hair dryer? I don't. A lot of people do, especially that's too dark. 
especially if um, you want it to dry quickly, it's okay to use a hair dryer. If you have a big puddle of water, just be careful that it's not going to push your paint around where you don't want it. You know what I mean? Because you get a you get a puddle of paint here, and you turn on the hair dryer, and it <laughs> pushes it over this way. Yeah. This is kind of happening. That's yeah, like kind of nice up there. Cool. I want some more texture down in here. This is where I check if it's too wet. It's not going to do this. I need this if the areas of this are at the sheen, because as I look at it in the light, there's still standing water on the surface. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like over here. Nope, there's still some standing water there. And you need the light to be right. Like right here, there's no, or maybe here. I'm going to try this. I'm blocking this because I don't want this texture in the sky. So I just, you can, oh, that's, yeah, no, that's my alcohol. Okay. The paint is, I mean, the paper is buckling. Yep. Bit. But if I leave it alone, as it dries, it'll it flatten back up. Well, as it buckles, I find that, um, then it's making puddles where I don't want them to be. Right, right. and that's why you have to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Because if you do a large wash, there's no way you're going to avoid that buckling. Except on 300 pound, it's less apt to do it. But 300 but don't panic a little bit. Let it let it dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it will flatten. Mm -hmm. That's where the patience comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Watercolor needs patience. See, and everything's too dry. <clears throat> this green. If I wanted to lift any of this, it wouldn't, it probably would not lift. I could probably, what I mean by lift, I need something firmer, is taking a clear, clean brush. <laughs> See, my water needs to be changed. And you can, I'm just kind of rubbing it to um, soften the paint that's there. And I use the brush as kind of a sponge by going across it. It starts to lift up some of the paint. See that darkness? That's not lifting because this is not high quality paper. Okay. But what if paper I, is it? I, I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was in my box, ready to go. I don't know what it is. If I tried to lift, like if this were too dark back here, lifting that green green tends to stain more than some other colors no it's lifting okay see how i've lightened it by lifting it slightly i'll try a little bit right here that's not lifting at all it's pretty dry yeah but if it's dry you just gently kind of work it and see how that lightened that area mm -hmm. yeah so much more interesting yeah, that's great to do in mountains, too. I discovered this one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is, this is too dry here. So now I would wait, when this is dry, to, you want to touch the back of your finger. If it still feels cool, it's still damp. Mm -hmm. And I want it between maybe my matte stage, but between matte and dry as I come in and I will eventually add more grasses down here. Mm -hmm. If you do it before it's totally dry and it's at matte, these grasses will bleed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, you touch it so you get some nice sharp, sharp ones. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, it was still mm -hmm. slightly matte. It bled a little bit, but up here it was dry, dry. Um, this, that tiny line there was a rigor brush. Oops, not a good example in front of people. Oh, go for it. <laughs> if you ever put your brush, make sure your brush is clean, clean. If it's cadmium yellow, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> any cadmiums, any cobalt, you don't want to be sticking that in. That's what happened to Anwabra. If you find you've got stray hairs, sometimes, and if you don't want to stick it in your mouth, you can take your saliva because it acts like a little bit of glue. It kind of holds those hairs together. But that's how I get those tiny, tiny little lines. Mm -hmm. And you can also use that for your tree trunks. Mm -hmm. Tree trunks, anything in nature, you want it irregular. You don't want it look like fence posts. Even fence mm -hmm. posts, you don't want them to look like mm -hmm. fence posts. It's just kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference. A lot of this is in the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to break up that leave, blue. Leave that. Good, what? 
these these two brown yeah lines. this is this is like there's a little area in the grass where the the, the dirt is just kind of um, coming down that's what that is okay I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to knock back the blue in your trees, a yellow glaze, I noticed you mixed. I did. Later on, I dropped in a little yellow to, to feel that glow happening. Actually, I think I used some of this. I can feel, when I'm playing on my palette, mixing it, I can feel if my brush is too dry. Mm -hmm. And that's just painting, practice. painting, painting. You practice, you get used to it, you and you start learning about it so I just I just and notice I, I I'm not trying to like do 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 I'm just kind of like even allowing my body to be irregular and create a more natural um, technique this is really this is